stay tuned for exclusive content from the Written Sins Network. Hi, my name is Bodan Nesucheni. Uh, behind me is Jeremy Katanik. He is the artist and my co-creator on the comic book series Blackbird. This is Gabby Garcia. He letters Blackbird. And behind me here is uh, Rob Torres. He does our covers and some interior art in Blackbird. And he also draws and co-creates this series with me called Souls Eternal. Did I say my name? Yes, Bodan. Right, I'm Bodan. <laughs> Excellent. What's your website? Oh, uh, for the website, you can go to www.resistanceentertainment.com or you can find us on Instagram and Twitter by that name. What are your current comic book titles? The current books that we've got here at the show right now are Blackbird, Rancor, Souls Eternal, Rev Conviction, and Conviction. All right, and you guys are from Florida? Uh, yeah. Well, right. yeah. Yep. Very good. What indie title are you guys currently a huge fan of and why? I'm not going first. Uh, I like Tart. Tart is fun. Art's great. Writing's great. Uh, one of the ones I like to find here. Uh, besides Tart, I'm also a fan of Tailwind. I have to work on you know, life, so. and I like bands. Um, I like three things. Yeah, that's. I mean, I, I love Warren Ellis. Like I think you're supposed to say tart too. Right. Well, oh, yeah. He said tart first. Yeah. Kevin yeah. Joseph pays yeah. us to say yeah. tart. <laughs> we get twenty dollars by Kevin Joseph every time we say tart in a good book. I also like tart, and my favorite indie book is Lazarus by. Rucka, I think, and I forget the artist name, but it's great. What has been your favorite project to work on and why? Um, every project that I work on with these amazing people is amazing and one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, but it's true. Blackbird issue zero. I did the cover. That was the first comic. You did do the cover. Yeah. That was the first comic that I've worked on. It was a dream come true, and it just got the ball rolling. And it's been fun since then. Um, favorite book to work on. So, so like, so good. We bought in. We put a lot, a lot into that book. Book one currently available at your comic shops and on Comixology. Right. So, yeah, definitely. I, um, I'm not sure if it's, I mean, for me, it's like always like the next project. Yeah, uh, like um, the next issue. Issue issue one was always special because, I mean, that was like my introduction to sequential art. Like from going to like a kind of art, like, being, like sequential art. And just like, it was so much that I had to learn and then, like having that final, like in, like, in my hands, like, what are your current goals that you each have that you want to see? This is where I want to see what I've created. Make a television show, whether it be a are movie. Are you talking about like for like in the, for like the creative process or like in general? In general. I mean, for me, like if you want to talk existentially, it's the point where we can all do this and make a living. You know, we all have day jobs. Um, but beyond that. You know, it's just making the best possible product. You know, Blackbird, we were just kind of saying how, like, we've got new stuff at the show, but Blackbird's been our best seller still. So, like, everybody just gravitates towards it. The fact that they love it, I'm grateful for. And the idea for continuing this series is to just keep iterating and making every issue better. Uh, what was the question? Do you want to see, like, your stuff become, like, television, movies? Oh, is that, okay. like, a, a goal of yours? I mean, yeah, that would be cool. What I want to see, and I, I've mentioned this to you, is I want to see Blackbird as a video game. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, a 2D Castlevania side-scroller. Side-scroller, 2D yes. platformer. Castlevania 2. Uh, that's where I want to see Blackbird go. Alright. Oh, yeah. Video game. I would love to see my project go into video game work, especially uh, Soul for Blackbird. Make the both best of both of Souls Eternal, uh, Soul Cal. Yeah, I know. Yes. I, I, I mean, as far as like the number of Blackbird, like I would love to see Blackbird, like, gain momentum to be able to, like, branch into like other purposes. Yes. 
like like to have like a Blackbird T-shirt, or maybe just like a coffee table book of just like Blackbird or, content or like stuff like that. Archiving all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we've got so yeah. much extra content that it just took <laughs> us like to make like yeah. one issue. And like all of a sudden we can have something, and I would love to see that be put together. Or, like, In 2016, do you guys feel that women are still too overly sexualized? Or are they being treated with the dignity and the respect they deserve in a fantasy realm? Uh, totally over-sexualized. Um, I also think to an extent it also goes in the other way. I think where there's a level of over-sensitivity, you know? But I, I think either side could use improvement. The people that feel like, you know, hey, you know, this is too much. And the people that, you know. But yes, totally over -sexualized. Extremely oversexualized. Um, a project that I've worked on that I can't say much, but I can say that even if a girl looks slightly overweight, I had my bosses bring down my neck to make a girl who wasn't even remotely overweight look just unrealistically trim. Barbie like. Barbie like. And it's so disgusting. I hate doing it. But, you know, the man. It's the one that kind of controls everything, and unfortunately, you have to listen to the man. Uh, you have a different opinion. I do, yeah. <laughs> I, I think, no, I, I think the women are overly sexualized, but I, I also think men are too. Oh, so yeah, think, totally. I think it's become more accepted for a man to be sexualized with the big pegs and the big biceps and the perfect body and six foot something and whatever it is because no one looks at it as it's over sexualization but it absolutely is. We don't see Superman five foot two with a normal man's body walking around in spandex that's actually loose on him. We don't see that. Unless you're Rob Liefeld. Unless you're Rob Liefeld. <laughs> so that I think I think sexualization of characters is very, very rampant in I just it's like, um, uh, it's, it's low as what you said, like, I, I feel like, say, like, women are overly sexualized, but also, like, the hands are pretty low. Yeah. You can spend your time, like, looking and find all of the over sexualization that you want, but then you, there's also, like, there's actually, like, effort. If you look that, for it, you're going to find it. You know, yeah. you look to be attacked. Like, you know, maybe Spider Woman. Like, yeah, I feel like that's, that's, uh, like, as far as super. I feel like, like, especially compared to like what it was, like, yeah. Yeah, like that's definitely like an unconscious effort. I feel like, yeah, you know, that. Like, yeah. you know, like that's not what storytelling is about. Like, I like that. I appreciate that, but it is. It's really like, so. How do you guys deal with the negative feedback that you might encounter online? Do you have a policy of like not just looking, not dealing with it, letting it roll off your back? Uh, uh, I mean. You know, when you're doing this, like a lot of our social networking right now, our fans, people that follow us, people that find us online and think we're doing it in three games. So really, I can't think of any instance so far, not on Twitter, where we've had anything that's really negative. I mean, the one way I've dealt with it before with like my film background is sometimes you put stuff on YouTube, maybe you disable comments, you know, which isn't a good thing to do. But I mean, one thing we would do with negativity, if we ever got it, like any funny commercial we would probably just shut it down. Uh, I mean, as an artist, for like the last 15 plus years, uh, negativity is like, it's always going to happen, so I'm kind of used to the punches, uh, so it's easy to ignore it. Uh, oh, you mean like for feedback? Yeah. 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 Oh, that's, oh, I, I totally put that in uh, Yeah, it's, I, I mean, I'm used to it. I mean, I get it almost, I don't want to say every day, but I always get feedback on all the art that I make uh, in my day job and stuff, so I'm kind of used to it. Uh, what I like is to hear the positive feedback from the two yeah. fans. That's what really gets me going. The negative feedback for me is it's easy to ignore some of these Art is subjective. Someone's going to look at something and say, hey, that's amazing. Someone else is going to go, that freaking sucks. I don't know if I can say the F word. That fucking sucks. You know, so everyone, so it's different. So really, I mean, we've got, we've got people that have looked at um, one of our books and go, nah, it's in black and white. Well, fine, it's not for you, which is fine. But like, you just got to be thick skinned. Honestly, and if you're doing art, that's part of the, the character.
Doesn't bother me at all. I take Donald Trump's approach. <laughs> all attention is good attention. I would vote for you. You would uh, vote for me? I wouldn't in 2016. I am. <laughs> uh, well, for me, it's like, uh, the only people that are really going to take the time to tell me something negative or like something that I'm going to tell me to put like a bunch of or something at like crazy people? No. It's the opposite. It's going to be people that like feel like they, that I could benefit from something that um, that they can see that I can't in that moment. Because you get really wrapped up in the project and you don't, maybe you can't like back up and see it's like, oh, you know what? If I just look at this with new eyes, I can see that that, that, another person's new perspective that would take the time to tell me that that's something that maybe I can fix and here are some ways to fix it. Even that's, that's negative, but in a really constructive way. Constructive way. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's most of the stuff that, yeah. that, that, that I've got that I get. Since we make indie comics, the product, in my mind, is always the best that it can be. Yeah. Uh, I always love it. In my day job as an artist, I don't like my work as much as my personal work because in my regular job, uh, my boss is, I'll go the extra mile to make it the way I like it, and then I'll have people say, no, get rid of this, that sucks, get rid of that, get rid of that. So my art turns into someone else's vision, yeah. but as an indie developer, this is our vision. No one is telling us what to do. No one, is, stop, no one is stopping us. And we all, we all try to make the best thing possible for ourselves. Absolutely. And we're not, we're not catering to someone else. We're catering to ourselves. Okay, some guy, lots of money, comes over and wants to buy everything, the rights to it. You no longer have a choice. No. Gives you a stack of money. Yeah. Never. You don't have any choice in the matter what happens next. You're never going to settle it. What about the rest of you guys? Would no, you I walk don't do away? Well, I mean, I'm we a shark. <laughs> no, if, if well, they offer me enough, sure, it's sold. But well, we don't, we, we don't, have, we, we, we don't, don't own, own we don't own this. So, so but um, I mean, to me, like I have a background in filmmaking. Well, not solely. We don't solely. We don't solely own it. But well, like for Blackbird, one of our other books, like I, I want us to be involved in some way, and because I have this background in filmmaking, that would always be, you know, unless it was like a you know, movie. But like, no, I'd want to be part of, you know, some capacity to make sure that. We'll One good one. No, <laughs> not really. Because one, I mean, maybe Fox Search. The second search, and third. Fox the second and third movie was horrible. Oh, and then there was the TV show. That was a mess. I like the TV I show. I wouldn't sell it either. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I like I'm, the TV. I'm a part of this too. Listen, I know. listen. The Crow TV show was great. And that Brandon, not Brandon Lee. Brandon Lee was in the movie. No. Sorry, what was the next question? Uh, the final <laughs> question for today is. What superhero, despite their popularity, can you not stand and would love to see them die and never come back? Deadpool. Why? <laughs> because he's oversaturated. Every convention you have hundreds of people that it's just, it's a joke that's been overkill. It's a cash grab. And I get that. But when things become that, it's just, Deadpool not. Iron Man. Really? Yeah, what? I fucking hate him. He's really, he's, yeah, he's horrible. Some rich guy who makes weapons to blow up other countries and stuff. And no, fuck that. If you're gonna choose a rich guy, go with Batman. Donald Trump 2016. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck Iron Man. Batman. I say kill Batman. That's valid. Because he he is the epitome of really badly adjusted human being. <laughs> okay. And I really honestly, I think he is. I think he is half of the problem with what is going on in God. I think some of the, some of the villains that came out of Gotham City really couldn't exist without that. Joker, like a real place. Joker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, You're part of this, remember? Maybe, maybe Wolverine. <laughs> wow. Since we're taking jabs at everyone's favorite heroes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you just if we just got like a megaphone and you just had you speak your mind like 
this is a mob in 2020. <laughs> yeah, so Wolverine, because he's been around forever and what keeps him alive besides popularity, right? So. <laughs> Alright guys, so take us home. What's coming next from you guys? What are your next big projects? Uh, more Blackbird, more Souls Eternal, um, and new stuff in the future not going to talk about yet. But if you want to find out what we're doing and keep up with us, Instagram, resistance underscore entertainment. On Twitter, it's resistance underscore ENT. My name, you can put it on the video. It's really long and European sounding uh, for my, my handle. Guys, do you want to? Uh, I mean, there's the, there is the secret project. Uh, I don't know. I'm at where they can follow you so they can know. Oh, okay. I mean, follow, follow them. You can't follow me. I have no social media. Rockstorysart.com, that's my website. It was and really funny. Rockstorys, uh, <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm, I'm Jeremy Katana, K-A-T-A-N-I-C, on everything. On, on, on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, Twitter, on Twitter, also. The best way to know what we're up to is to follow us, and uh, Matt, just support indie comics, <laughs> and whatever social media outlet this video is going to be posted. Visit us at www.writtensins.com.